Welcome to the show today. I'm joined by an inspiring guest that is a musical extraordinaire. We may even have an exclusive performance. Welcome, John, to the show. start today's show, I'd like to take a minute to discuss a topic that came up with our producers while preparing for today's show. The discussion was whether photo and video journalists have a moral duty to help assist where they can when capturing the strife that plagues this world. This was in response to a video posted by Channel 4 where a young girl who was recorded in Syria's current civil war was caught shaking, unable to secure oxygen masks, secure by following an alleged chlorine attack. Have a look at this picture and you'll see what I'm talking about. Older than four or five years old. Her oxygen mask slips off. She tries to fix it herself, but her hand is shaking too much. No one seems to notice. In this Aleppo hospital, there are too many other patients needing urgent help. Yes, you, you, you see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, we are drawn also to Kevin Carter, the South African photojournalist who captured the infamous Pultizel winning picture during Sudan's 1993 picture of a little girl surrounded by vultures. Have a look at this again. Exactly, you see what I'm talking about. While there are many varying accounts on how the image was taken, Carter later cited he took the picture because it was his job title and leaving he was told not to touch the children for fear of transmitting disease. Upon committing suicide in 1994, his suicide note partially read, I am haunted by the vivid memories of killings and corpse and anger and pain of starving or wounded children, of trigger-happy madmen, often police or killer of killer executioners. Now, while Channel 4 may have not shot the original footage of the young Syrian girl in a world where media outlet wants the highest ratings and online footprints, the most socio-political catchy and charities aim to pull on our heartstrings. You know that feeling. The most efficiently where photo and video journalists first thought it is to get the image and their lost thought is to help the person before them. Should we expect and call on our media outlets to be led by their moral compasses? Should we? What do you say? I would like to hear your opinion on the matter. Share your comments below or tell us on Twitter, hashtag Silburn TV. Joining us today, we have musical extraordinaire, John Fisher. He's a talented musician and the lead of IDMC Gospel Choir. He has also turned his love for music into different avenues of business. Let's welcome to the show, John Fisher. Hey, John. Thank you, sir. Fantastic. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Good, good, good. Well, uh, should we, I should have actually started off with talking about Mr. Jam Traffic or Traffic Jam? Traffic Jam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah because I, I like to listen to your um, Traffic Jam mm. rant. Mm. I also find that sometimes the views for our shows tend to be great when it is off the record, mm. really not planned, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but John, for our viewers, and, and tell us more about who is John Fisher? Well, John Fisher is a um, recently celebrated 50-year-old. You uh, celebrated being 50? Yeah, I, I, it's April the 20th uh, this year, yes. 2016. Uh, I celebrated my 50th birthday. Wow. Uh, and so I'm classed as middle-aged or getting older. I thought they um, said 50s when life starts. Well, yeah, 50 is the new 30, I think, for me yeah. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I've just celebrated that and um, just getting to the place where I'm getting very comfortable with who I am. Mm. Uh, I think I got there when I was 40. Um, I remember my sister telling me on one occasion mm. that, John, you're not obliged to do this and you're not obliged to do what you don't want to do. Yes. And so from that point onwards, I started to look at life in a different way. Uh, building up to the 50th now, mm. I'm in a place where I think I'm very comfortable yeah. with who I am, my personality, uh, the individual that's in the public eye. Yes. Um, I'm married uh, mm. to a lovely lady named Morlin. Yes. Uh, for the past, we just celebrated our 26th wedding anniversary. Yes. And uh, we have two sons, uh, Andre and Dana. One mm. is 22, one is 19, so yes. I'm a father. Um, yes. I'm a businessman. 
I'm a minister mm. of music yes. at my local church, New Testament Church of God, Brixton. Yes. Um, I, I'd like to think I'm a bit of a comedian. Uh, from time to time, but we'll get into that a bit later. Yeah, um, I actually saw you somewhere in some Middle East countries mm. doing some <laughs> dancing. Yes. Um, Is that okay? Well, yeah, yeah. People well, can see it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> John, um, just listening to you a while ago, one of the key words you kept saying, uh, phrase, is who I am, like identifying who I am. And do you think that you're now 50, mm. but you said like you reach at a point whereby it's like, Stepping it to the next level. Mm. When do people you believe know who they are? I believe people know who they are when they are comfortable yes. with who they are. Yes. Um, I've been comfortable with who I am for a while. Yes. But I think as you're growing and as you're maturing, um, as individuals, we're always trying to uh, kind of prove ourselves in yes. a way to people yes um to show people that you know we are who we are mm -hmm. or we're good at this or we can make this grade or we mm -hmm. can um do all of these things in life and um step up and be a, a really proud figure yes but um i think you get to the point where you're so comfortable in yourself i don't need to prove it anymore yeah you yeah. know and i think um, I'm, I'm now comfortable in myself yes. that I don't feel I need to prove it to anybody anymore. You know, you take me as I am. Mm. Um, and if you don't like it, then fair enough. It's uh, like freedom. It is it's freedom. like a level of freedom. Yeah, yeah. there is a release yes, yes. You know, to, that you can start to really enjoy yeah. yourself. And people find this at different mm. stages. Mm. Some people are comfortable with who they are at yes. 20. Uh, and 30, yeah. you know, um, I think I was comfortable around, uh, you know, 25, between 30 and 35 yes. Yes. mark. No, that's, that's, that's very interesting because, uh, I mean, this is an inspiring motivational show. And one of the things is that we try to find guests where we can get some nuggets or mm -hmm. some inspirational um, words that can inspire our mm -hmm. viewers. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we, we find a lot um, in life is identity knowing who you are mm. and also regarding like the black community now mm -hmm. with all of what is happening mm -hmm. it's identifying who you are mm -hmm. and for me personally um is one of the things i always say to people sometimes you know i'm silburn sidiel son of eric b sidiel from jamaica i am who i am you know what mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. tough if you don't mm -hmm. like it bite it or stuff mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so that's very good john um anything more you want to say on that particular point no i think as i said mm. you know once you you've worked out you know yeah. you, Life puts you on a journey, mm. and on this journey you get not, yes. um, and then it's how you respond from that yes. being not or, or stand up again. And I really believe that once you've worked out how to um, take this journey and be successful in it, yes. then you can move and be confident in who you are. Yeah. You know, yeah. so really no, cool. that, that's powerful. That's awesome. Mm. Now you're predominantly a gospel singer, mm. but I've worked on secular music mm. also. Um, can one exist successful in the world of gospel and secular music? And what do you say to people who criticize artists who do? Because I've seen you. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, I mean, I can see here Shaka Khan, Misha Paris, different person mm -hmm. that you support. How is that? What's a challenge like as a Christian? Yeah. I think again, it's about being comfortable in who you are. Mm -hmm. um, I've been privileged to play for a lot of different people, mm -hmm. gospel and secular, as you said. Um, I've enjoyed the trappings of that success, whether yeah. it's financial or recognition. Um, I believe that working with all these artists have opened doors for me mm -hmm. that maybe wouldn't have been open to me. Mm -hmm. I think as an individual, as a Christian, um, my loyalties are to God. Yeah. And uh, I, I had a conversation yesterday with a friend of mine <coughs> And I said to them that, <clears throat> you know, once you find yourself, once you're confident in Jesus and who mm. you are, then you can do practically anything, practically mm. anything. Mm -hmm. uh, there is still a line which I won't cross. Yes. Um, and at that point, I turned around and said, no, I'm not willing to do that. Mm. Um, as a gospel artist working with secular artists, um, there's something about us that they want us to be a part yes. of them and what they do. Yeah. Um, there are people that have uh, views on it mm -hmm. and they are welcome to their views because it's their views. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what I try to tell my children, because both yeah. my children are now 
musicians yes. and they work in the gospel and the secular field. Okay. Um, I try to tell both of them to you know, honor God in everything that they yeah. do. Be respectful at <coughs> all times. Uh, because you know what? For many of the guys who are working in the secular scene, it is work. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. That's how they see it. They see it as work. They've worked on this talent. They've worked on this gift. Um, and now because of this gift, not only people in church are recognizing them, yes. people in the secular field are recognizing them. And so for them, you know, every time I see my son uh, each day, we get up, we have breakfast, blah, blah, blah. I said, are you working today? Yeah. I don't say, are you doing a gig? Are you playing for someone? I yeah. said, are you working today? Yeah. And he says, yes, I've got a rehearsal uh, at the studio and I've got uh, That's a work, gig isn't it? It's work. It's part of the process. It's work. Because most times time people think that the work is when you're actually doing the gig right. where you're going to be paid for, but right. you have to actually practice. Prepare for it, it. Yes, yeah. yeah. So it's work. Mm. Um, I remember a, 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 sh a short story to tell mm. you. Yes. A friend of mine and a few of the guys in this church were doing lots of secular concerts. Mm. And the church got really, and some of the members got really angry about it. And a conference, in the middle of a, of a, a church conference, uh, somebody stood up and said, you know, is there any other business that we mm. have to discuss? And someone put up their hand and said, well, I'm, I've got something to ask. I'm not very happy with our young people yes. working and playing in the secular music industry. And uh, some people jumped on it and said, yes, it's not right, blah, blah, blah. And they started mm. to get yeah. a bit irate about it. And they asked the young people, and these young guys, they're very impressionable, but they just wanted to do that. They enjoyed what they're doing. They got mm. the opportunity. And um, because they couldn't really defend themselves too much, mm -hmm. one gentleman uh, got up and said, you know, um, I know my young people are, these young people are playing mm. in the secular field. And I wish them well, because for the last 20 years, I've been working for a cigarette factory. <laughs> and that's my work. <clears throat> yes. And so Benson and Hedges have been paying my tithes. Yes. For the last 20 years. While well, they've been killing people. Right. What do you want to say about that? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take a quick break now. And there was, no, there was no comeback to that. Mm -hmm. So he said, young people, as long as you honour God in what you do, mm -hmm. pay your tithes, be respectful, but don't get caught up in the trappings of mm -hmm. secular lives. Because we know that, I think what people see, uh, they see what's put up in the media, yeah. Uh, yeah. where some of these artists are involved with drugs and mm -hmm. with drink and with sex mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. But what they don't see is the musicians who have to get up and practice their instrument. Yeah. They don't see that they have to get on a bus and drive to rehearsal and do four days of rehearsals. Mm -hmm. They don't see the traveling up and down the country in a tour bus or in yes. a cramped up condition. Um, they don't see sometimes that they don't get paid mm -hmm. or the record company has held up their money so they've had to borrow from their parents to try and make things through. Mm -hmm. um, but all they see is what the media wants to put out there. Mm -hmm. So it's a big story, you know I, what I mean? That, so, that's very interesting. And before I go to who would you say is your memorable um, antidote for having worked with, what is like, um, is, is your faith become more stronger because it's a combination of the secular mm -hmm. mixing with the gospel mm -hmm. but also with society today yeah. on a general because yeah. everything is all liberal and everything is all it is it is yeah. uh, one of the things that really helped me working in the secular field mm -hmm. um, when there was a few of us yeah. was in a band whether it technical technical team or whatever mm -hmm. at lunch times or dinner time we used to sit together as guys yeah. church guys and talk about church mm -hmm and talk about church with a passion. Mm -hmm. You know, our praise and worship, or Sister Martin, the Sister Martin, you know, when she's dancing around <laughs> and everything like that, and yeah. the preaching and things like that, you know. And because we spoke about our faith with such passion, the other artists or the technicians would always want to sit on our table yeah. 
to hear our stories and about our church and what we do mm. to the extent where many of them started to come to our church yes. or our churches just to experience gospel music mm. and gospel singing and preaching and things like that. And I can't say that everybody got saved. Yes. Um, but what I can say is that um, we were a witness. Mm -hmm. Our behavior, our conduct and the was seeds a were planted. And seeds were planted, seeds were planted. You know? and so we were able to be who we were. Yes. You know, when um, the parties were going on, mm -hmm. very easy for us to be you know, down at the bar and doing the whole thing. You know? mm -hmm. But you know, we, we'd go down and be polite. A certain time, you know, mm -hmm. it's time for me to go back to my hotel room. So. Great, that's, that's good, John. So you have the pleasure, as I mentioned before, mm. of working with incredible artists mm. like Shaka Khan, mm. Misha Paris, yeah. CC Wynan, yeah. and that is the name of you. You may add some more, mm. but what is one of the more memorable anecdotes from having work with such musical powers? And of course, you may have other artists you, may, can you want to say. Um, I think one <clears> of them, <throat> um, working with, with some of these guys, is just seeing how they work. Mm -hmm. I've been able to learn so much from these guys yes. and being able to bring it back to my gospel situation mm -hmm. with my mm -hmm. choir um, learn how people re interact with each other yes how they work in rehearsals mm -hmm. uh, systematically they piece songs together mm -hmm. um, and by doing that I've been able to bring it back to my own situation yes. and my own productions and be able to say okay we're going to do it like this uh, instead of um, for argument's sake, uh, working with some of the secular production houses, you know, mm. I've worked with Cisco, uh, Psycho, sorry, mm. uh, Simon Cowell's organization and yeah. some of these guys and seeing how they do their things. Mm -hmm. So what I've been able to glean from that is that if a concert's going to start at seven o'clock, mm -hmm. I'm not loading in at four o'clock. Yes. I'm loading in at eight o'clock in the morning. Wow. You know what I mean? So that mm. I'm loading at eight o'clock. We systematically work through, we put the production together, mm -hmm. we sound check, rehearse, everything is tight. So that come to showtime, bam, bam. it goes. Yes. You know, as opposed to what we used to do, where we get in at four o'clock and it was always a rush mm -hmm. and we was always late. Wow. You know? wow. Um, one of the things that <clears throat> I was able to do, we, as a choir, the MC Gospel Choir, we was able to uh, sing for the late, um, great Luciano Pavarotti for yes. his wedding. Um, and in, even in that, the, the intricacy of mm. the production and the setting up and being on our cue on time. Did he um, join in with the? Uh, uh, he, you know what? He, <laughs> <laughs> it was at one of these, uh, one of this um, really spectacular concert halls yes. where he started his career. Yes. Uh, and you know he had the. the uh, Italian uh, football team was in there, the mm. mayors were in there, all these really high mm. dignitaries are there. And we started singing and we're doing what we're doing. And all of a sudden, this gentleman in white walked out yeah. and took his seat, right, and I was directing, and he was right beside me. I was like, ah! You know, what I mean? it's that kind of thing where, <laughs> yeah. you know, you can get overawed by the presence of these people who yeah. are really big people yeah. in the scene. But it's, it's just taught me so much yeah. on how I conduct myself, mm -hmm. uh, my professionalism. So the gifts make the way. It, they do. And open doors. All the time. Fantastic. The time. Thank you for joining us, John. Ladies and gentlemen, see you next week for part two. Um, and so we've been very privileged to have worked out of the Fairfield Halls in Croydon. Yes. Um, and we've been able to present shows on an annual basis mm -hmm. uh, with a, a, a mass choir of about 500 children. Mm -hmm. And then we have dancers, we have musicians, uh, we mentor musicians. Today, when I started to really think about this thing, I thought, and, I'm, and I, if you look at my page, I made a joke about mm -hmm. it. I said, which black person mm -hmm. is getting out of bed at five o'clock and swimming the Thames? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm serious. Yeah. We're, and I'm, it may be stereotypical, but yeah. I'm telling the honest, the honest truth. Which black person mm -hmm. is going to get out of bed, swim the Thames, which is freezing, yeah. okay, and then sit on a runway mm -hmm. protesting? Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like. And don't forget to comment, but first subscribe. Hi everybody, my name is John Fisher and I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Uh, it's been a privilege hanging out with my good friend, Sylvan on this The Silburn TV Show. Check him out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Like his page, 
stick with him. He's going to keep you up to date with what's going on in the scene. God bless you all. Peace out for now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part two with John Fisher, musical extraordinaire, and. Uh, not available. <laughs> <laughs>